What's up? Ghost Fictions is here, and we're back again. This is the part 8 of a story where Izuku became the shadow hero. But before we start, please consider subscribe to the channel and give this video a like. Don't forget to check the description for more information. Now, let's get into part 8. Class 1A with Rumi and Najira all said bye to Izuku as he left for the internships. It was a surprise to many seeing Rumi and Najira hugging Izuku, but they went back to UA for their first lesson, which was a little later than usual. In class all 19 students were there so Izawa started to talk, as you know, your provisional exams will be coming up later today. Hitashi Shinso will be coming with us to the exam site and will most likely be given the 21st seat of 1A. This got many excited, their relationship with Hitashi went up since the camp, even if he was kidnapped. Sadly for the purple-haired kid, he just wanted to be left alone most of the time. With that being said Hitashi came in, for the time being you can sit in Izuku's place, you will be having a seat placed soon. Hitashi gave a grateful smile and nodded. We will be leaving at noon, don't put your hero clothes on yet. Then you stood up and rose his hand up, sir I have a question. Getting a nod, he continued, what will the exams be like? There will be two parts to it, it is usually some kind of team activity first then a rescue. But with the emergence of the gates there may be a new component or it will be done slightly different. As Awa explained. After the gates was more well known, laws and regulations were needed to be placed. Izuku did indeed send out at least one or two measuring devices to all hero embassies, now with it it was safer for people. What the Japanese HSPC did like many others allowed people to go into gates if they have some type of license. There are three type of licenses, the normal civilian type that allows people to go into E and D rank gates and use their quirks. The provisional license which is the same as the hero provisional license, allows those people to go to the gates up to their rank level. So for example if Katsumi would have gotten her provisional she could go to an A rank gate, but you will be needing a hero with the same rank. Finally, the proper so-called hunters or heroes, they could go up to a rank higher gate, but as support for those type of gates. There was an exception to the rule, Izuku Midoriya, he could do any gate he wants as he was a national level. But that being said the exams too needed to be changed a little as the governments around of the world see that gates start appearing more often every day. There were reports of gates not actually being open and killing some humans nearby, which was concerning. At the exam center. 1A with Hitashi got out of the bus with their hero suits in the hand with Azawa and surprisingly Najira as their supervisors for the day. The bubbly bluenet wanted to see how Izuku's friends did during the exam, so she went with Azawa. Now as the class was standing with Najira in her hero suit waiting for Azawa to get out of the bus, they were approached by Ketsubutsu Academy High, especially by a black-haired kid named Yoshindo. You must be UA. I am a big fan. He said with a fake but cocky smile towards them, I see Izuku Midoriya isn't here. A shame but you are nothing compared to him. Yo wanted to rile them up so more mistakes would be made by them. What he didn't expect was laughter and smirks, oh we know, but at least he is helping up getting stronger. Shoko uncharistically spoke. This was a minor surprise as the quiet girl doesn't usually speak out loud, but then Yo came up to her and held her hands. The beauty, wow I am Yoshindo. What is your name? He said with his most charming smile. But the sweetly sick smile, she started to freeze the hands of Yo, Shoko Todoroki. Then when Yo felt his hands freeze over he jumped back and used his quirk to crack the ice breaking it to pieces. Shota. That word made Eriser head freeze up, let's get married. A lot of students from both school sweat dropped at that. With a look straight at Emi, he said, no joke. She quirked her eyebrow, you don't look dead, let's get married, so you won't look dead. The face palm was heard from the teacher, I may not be as tired as before, but still no. He then turned to his students, get inside guys, get changed and follow the instructions. With that being said they were about to leave when class 1A was stopped or more specifically Chika. Chika girl, how you doing? Chika turned around and smiled. Hey Kami, good to see you again. The duo hugged with confusion coming from 1A. This guy's is my friend from Shiketsu, Kami. Kami these are my new classmates at UA. That's rad, where the hot eye you been talking about? Izuku right. Chika covered Kami's mouth so she wouldn't be talking about anything Chika didn't want. Najira had her eyebrow risen, not surprised anymore that more girls had a crush on her Zuzu. Kitsumi had her eye twitching. Aminari then laughed, I wonder when Izuku will realize that, he is pretty dense if a girl doesn't ask him out. This made all girls interested in Izuku to freeze and realize that what he said was true. Najire just blinked him on the head. You guys should start going. I will be cheering on you guys. Najire spoke to them, they nodded and started to leave. I Najire senpai. Most of 1A said as they left. Imi then looked at her old friend, did you not tell them about the exams? He just quirked an eyebrow. You know, you a crush. 
Shota just laughed, if you expect my kids to be the same as the sports festival you are mistaken horribly. They will crush their competition. With that Izawa went to the viewing area with Najire, with Joke following them shortly. So where is Monarch? Joke asked, she was curious and did want to see him in person. He went to America for internships. He will be back in three weeks or something. As always stated non-committedly. Joke just pouted at that. I wonder how Zuzu is doing. I think he is still on the plane. Najire thought. With 1A. They got into their hero suits and were standing with around 2,000 other students in a massive rectangular room. Yakimiru Mara, the organizer of the exams came up on the stage, and the participants became quiet, the man looked worse than Azawa some of 1A students mused. Good afternoon, I am Yakimiru Mara, and I am the overseer of this exam. The disinterested way he said those words made the participants raise an eyebrow. Welcome to the provisional exams. As you may know, gates are appearing more frequently, meaning more heroes will be needed to counter them. Even if we have Monarch doing most of them at the moment, we still need more heroes to complete them. However the standard of the heroes dropped, we only want best of the best. Out of over 2000 of you only 150 would actually get the license. This shocked many of those participants, but they understood the underlying truth in the words of the nearly dead man. Usually we would have an elimination part for the first round which is everyone against everyone, but this time you will have to worry about fake monsters. Don't worry they are programmed to not kill you, but can still injure you. Some shouts were heard but Yakimiru just ignored them, for this round you will be need to have three special pods placed on a visible part of your hero costume or body. Behind him an image showing the allowed locations of the small circular disc placement. You will be given two balls each, and with those three balls you will need to eliminate three opponents. The discs will turn red if a ball touches it, but when all three discs were hit, the one who got the last point receives the pass. If all of the three discs flash red you are out, but if yours flash green then you pass. Only 150 people can pass. Good luck and make it quick. After that a massive yawn came out of the mouth of the man as he walked away. Let's kill those fuckers. One explosive blonde shouted with an explosion coming from her fists. Heian nodded, if we pass then we can go into gates with Izuku. Ajiro came up to them and said, we will win. Manliness. Others from 1A just chuckled at the uplifting spirit of Ajiro. This is what some of the class needed, it wasn't as if they were not ready, but they needed more confidence. Some even wished that Izuku was there fighting with them. After everyone got their discs and the three balls, the box opened up. Over the speaker a voice was heard, you have five minutes to get into a favorable location. Most of 1A actually stayed together. Only a small group of Katsumi which got Shoko, Heian, Ijiro and Denki with them to a location that was inspired by a town. Go. With the final anankment hell started. With Katsumi's group. After walking for some time with Katsumi arguing with Denki, they heard the word go. With that robots at the size of the two-pointer that she had to face during the entrance exam, jumped out of their hiding places. Using the move she learned not too long ago, she shot one in the head destroying it. The robots didn't look that bad, but the group soon realized that there are three types of robots, the speedsters, the tankers and assassins. What Kitsumi just killed was an assassin, they don't produce any sound and are agile. Tankers have shields on them and punch hard, whilst the speedster's speed was high, its actual defense was low. Heian threw one of her swords at a tanker distracting it, whilst she materialized a sword for a kill, going to the left she stabbed a sword that had the properties of fire destroying it. The group of five then were met with a group of twenty students with colorful ninja outfits. Kitsumi just snorted, one of ninja. Boy, give up and we won't rough you up that badly, one of the wannabes spoke up, that person was throwing some nuts up and down, the metal ones more specifically. Ajiro took a step forward, that isn't manly enough for us. With that Shoko froze the whole floor making some of the ninjas stuck, Denki with the support of Ajiro and Heian rushed towards them, and with Ajiro taking a blow from an enlarged nut. Heian jumped above Ajiro with a sword made up of electricity to knock out one of her opponents, whilst Denki went from his side with his disc shooters. The purple ninja with a black one dodged it, but when they wanted to make fun of the blonde, Kaminari shot electricity, knocking the two unconscious. Itsumi shot towards a blue ninja, preparing for an explosion the ninja shot water out of his hands nearly hitting her. Due to the time training with Izuku, she dodged that purposefully at the last second, then boom, shooting a massive explosion that caused the blue ninja to hit a white ninja cracking some bones, but having the both go unconscious. They are weak. But when she looked around she saw that all of the 20 ninja are unconscious. She then took her ball and eliminated three, whilst the rest of the team eliminated the others. Heian came closer and said, Izuku taught us, we may never rise to his level, but our skills are no joke either. Enki nodded, with his idea of making a metal disc fly out, and with this new armor from the mana crystals, I don't get brain fried that easily. 
he is a manly's man of all men, but with his help I can go ultra hard, an awkward silence came upon them with the four others looking at Ajiro like a madman. Laughter is what they came after what Ajiro mentioned. Yeah, he is amazing. I wish he could see us in this exam. Shoko mentioned with the agreement of the others. Azawa and the group. Five students from U8 passed the first test. The speaker announced. B, 15 more and it barely been a couple of minutes. Najire stated excitedly. Indeed. That is the only word that came out of his mouth, Azawa was proud of his students especially Azuku. Neither may show it much, but both actually cared for each other, both knowing that the both will have their backs in the field, even if Azuku was lieges above Azawa. Flashback a couple of days. Azawa was walking to training field Zulu to check up on his two students, there was only one gate, and walking through the teacher's mouth was hanged lousily. Multiple reasons, there were massive trees that Izuku was seen producing from a massive skeletal figure that was just as tall as the trees. Secondly, his favorite bison was playing with the other animal shadows that were present. Thirdly, there was a massive white cat. Waving at his student who saw him and came down to greet him, Azawa was intercepted by the bison and the white tiger, asking to be scratched. Obliging, he scratched the both behind the ear, when Izuku came up and sat down the bison went behind Azawa and sat down so he could lean on it. The cat then laid next to him whilst some wolves and horses were around Izuku and the teacher. I see you have more shadows, planning on getting more. Yeah, even if I have shadows and gates doing them, I don't think I will be arising them. Izuku mentioned to the teacher. How much space do you have left for the shadows? Around 20 give or take. I am happy at the moment with them, as you see some are relaxing, some are training, and some are doing missions. Izuku explained in a carefree voice. Azawa just smiled, patting the head of the tiger was something that he started to enjoy more and more often. Can I have the bison and the tiger? Izuku looked at the two and with a question behind the next word, Izuku asked, do you two want to stay with Sensei? The two animals looked at each other and nodded to Izuku. Smiling, what are you naming them? The tiger, Luna. The bison, Donald. Great Siberian bison to Donald, Elite. White tiger boss to Luna Knight. Great, now you two have bodyguards. Izuku joked around. The duo then continued to talk about Izuku's progress and everything. If Shota Azawa ever had a child, he wished the child would be like Izuku. Flashback end. The heads of the bison and the tiger poked out, and Azawa patted the both of them. Najire squealed and started scratching the tiger. You two can get out if you want. The teacher stated. Much to the shock of Ms. Joke and some spectators, a tiger and bison taller than Azawa rose and then laid in front of the teacher, student duo. Luna, Donald. You too good. Getting a nod from both shadows, Azawa continued to watch his students. Ms. Joke then spoke in surprise, when did you have your own shadow? Shoda just chuckled, I started to like the two of them, and they are my bodyguards or things to cuddle up to. Outing, no fair. I want to cuddle with you. Then laughter erupted from the woman. No one knew this, but the reason why the two got out of the shadow was for Izuku to see what was happening with his friends, as he was bored on the flight. It took another 20 minutes for the rest of the 15 1A students to finish up the first test. As there were no mass eliminations more competition was there. Add the fact that UA crushing was a thing, they barely got through. Azawa was proud of Aoyama, he was nearly failing the hero course, but during summer some spark reappeared in the young man. Now there was a 30-minute break where all of 1A could relax whilst waiting for the second part to be prepared. Somewhere where humans lack the fortitude of knowing. We see the bearded old man looking through some kind of mist that showed an image of eight individuals sitting around a table. The man sadly couldn't hear the conversation, but let us get into the conversation. The conversation between the eight. Power, that was what was felt. Pure, ungodly power was felt around the eight individuals sitting around the table. There was one individual that used more power than the others in the room, that was the one who started this conversation. The one who has his power is still weak, but had grown in other skills. The only woman of the group had a massive blush seeing the image of the man that she fell in love with, reborn into a new being, my, my still handsome as ever my love. The blue figure smirked, why are we not attacking him now? It still takes time to getting to this planet with our armies. Somehow, the creator is fucking our plans up. The de facto leader spoke. Old man is getting weaker. One of the figures stated in an arrogant tone. The leader shook their head, we stole the power from him, even if he got the most of it, his earthly body is still not strong enough to cause a concern for us. Now as class 1A we're waiting for the next part to be explained, they overheard some of the other remaining participants mutter. Kyoka and Mezu especially heard the comments due to their quirks being useful for information gathering. We are lucky that Monarch already was given his license, otherwise we would have been toast. I swear UA is riding on Monarch's success and power. Monarch is so hot those were the comments that 1A was hearing. 
they knew that Izuku hates the media, and it was mainly thanks by the League of Villains that he is well known now. However due to their understimation of them allowed them to all succeed. Yuga Aoyama was one of the weakest in the class due to his low stamina, but his pain tolerance was high. Even he would have to admit it was easy to fool others when they were stressing, during the one week with Shota Izawa, helped him not rely fully on his quirk, and allowed his to expand his battle capabilities. From shooting lasers from his joints to a better combat style, he was improving. The way he completed the first part was by having teamed up with Tenya, Hanta and Koji. Yuga shot his beam up, and after other participants saw it, they rushed to get a point, but were captured by Hanta's tape, with the help of Tenya and Koji, they immobilized the group allowing them to succeed. Dika had a thought though, he is in America. Damn it, I will need to wait for three weeks. What should I do? Ah, yes some stress relieving punches would work. She mainly stayed with her classmates, she was one of the first of her class to pass, but it may have been from using her enhanced speed to capture them. Villains have attacked the city X, the civilians are in dire need of your rescue. Rescue the civilians. With that the speaker finished, some thought they heard, last part ye. Otherwise the box they stood in opened up revealing the arena they were all it destroyed. Boy what are you doing standing there? Save us. One of the members of the civilians rescue simulation person shouted. Some grumbled but all complied, 1A was glad that it was rescue. During the 10 days of training, they had a civil in rescue from a nearly falling down mall center, it was similar to what was happening now, but with more casualties. A handful of the students started making the medical area, whilst some went straight for looking for the civilians. Momo took charge and allocated everyone what they needed to be doing. The plan was smooth except Katsumi shouting at some of the people she needed to rescue, yeah a good day to be her. The remaining Shiketsu students cleared up a helicopter landing area. Some other schools joined with other schools to be able to help rescue the civilians, this time they didn't have to compete with others to pass. Alarm. Villains have entered the premises to take back the town X defend the civilians and counter the villains. The so-called villains were the members of Gang Orca Agency with the number 10 hero himself standing proud. Next to him stood one more figure that a lot of students recognized, Mount Lady. She was invited due to multiple reasons. Firstly, the HSPC will help her with her property damage she caused during her career. Secondly, it will also give her a minor boost in popularity. Thirdly, she wanted to see Izuku, but she forgot that he already has his provisional license. A massive smirk appeared on the heroine's face as she grew to her giant size, during this time Gang Orca sent out a sonic wave towards the students, making some stumble back. Yu, the student of Ms. Joke rushed forward and with his quirk, made the ground shake. Mount Lady regained her composure and jumped towards the students. Her goal was to distract them, whilst Gang Orca would deal more damage to the opponents. Shoko seeing this made a massive ice wall blocking her path, but was soon destroyed by her giant legs. Whilst this was happening, the rest of the 150 participants continued with the evacuation, with some branching off to help defeat the sidekicks and the two pro heroes. They still had a good amount of people to rescue, Hei In used a water-type sword to rescue some civilians from the water. Mizo used his dupliarms to carry three injured to the relocated medical center. Chika was pushing some constructions to allow access for other students to get an elderly woman out of the rubble. Katsumi was one of the defenders, she was aiming an explosion for Mount Lady's face, pops were hurt as Katsumi prepared for an attack. Mount Lady started to swat the UA student like a fly, but with Katsumi's mastery of movement in the air, the ash blonde girl dodged all of the attacks. Stun grenade. Disorientating the large woman, Katsumi did one final attack, Hoitzer impact. The massive explosion occurred knocking Mount Lady backwards a couple of meters. Bang Orca wasn't faring any better, with the added weight from the weights he couldn't move that fast. Still though he is considered to be a S-rank hero. Shoko sent multiple ice shots at the Orca, then having it be blasted back by the sonic attack that the man could produce. Then Fumikage came forward with Dark Shadow in a larger size than normal, the shadow started to attack Gang Orca, relentlessly exposing the slow movements of the arms of the man. Ioka and some students from Shiketsu were sending long-range attacks at the sidekicks that held cement guns. The students were keeping their ground until an announcement was heard. All civilians have been evacuated. The exam has been finished the speaker announced, please wait until the final results. But that Katsumi fell on her back panting, who knew that Mount Lady was an A-rank hero. I need to get stronger for Izuku and myself. She couldn't wait to get into some gates and gain experience, but also against villains as that is what she was missing the most. On the other side a smaller version of Mount Lady was seen, she had some soot on her body from Kitsumi, but otherwise she was good but tired netherless. Anankment screen. It was 20 minutes after the end of the second exam, with the proctor standing up on a stage with a massive screen behind him. Well done for coming this far. A yawn escaped his mouth behind me on this monitor will show who passed the second round. 
you need more than 50 points to pass, as it was a reduction system from 100. But that being said the names appeared behind him, you will be given a sheet saying what you did right and wrong, also the points you scored. If you can't see your name on the screen, don't worry. We will be having remedial classes allowing you to pass in 3 months, or you can redo it in 6 months time. With that the tired man left to get some well deserved sleep. Honestly all of the participants felt pity as it was clearly seen that he was being overworked, especially Hitashi felt bad as the man looked worse than himself. Everyone in class 1A passed, much to the shock of all of them, Hitashi who started training properly for a couple of months, was happier than ever too. When they received their paper, Katsumi was sweating, the reason why. She got 51, one less point, and she wouldn't have got the license. Reading further she realized that her full mouth probably did get her a low score, but now she didn't care, she could spend more time with Izuku. Heian received an 84 whilst Shoko a 78. The rest of the students were chatting, after getting their license they all sent a class photo to Izuku whilst some individuals sending him a private message with message of thanking him. All of the class 1A had to thank Izuku as it was Izuku that gave them experience with his shadow's different fighting styles, even if most held back. From that they gained experience using their quirks but also working together. Azawa and Najire came to them, well done guys. You did well. Najire stated in her bubbly voice. Even if she didn't spend time with a lot of them, she was feeling pride for Izuku's classmates. 1A sensei nodded to that, I agree. Now let us get going. He wasn't tired as much since Izuku gave him the energy drinks, but he still wanted to have his private time cuddling to his bodyguards. Before any of the tried to leave, Ms. Joke tried to hug Azawa, but was blocked by Donald and Luna. Azawa had a shit-eating grin on his face, thanks Donald, Luna. Ms. Joke just pouted. Though she said, don't forget love, we will be meeting in four weeks for joint training. With that she waved and jumped away. Fuck now this shouldn't be heard by any person, as all of 1A and Najire were blushing up a strum hearing the pretty multiple words that came out of their teacher's mouth. That is a lot of swear words all of 1A thought, let's say a lot of 1A, and Najire didn't even know that some of those words even existed, so new words were learned. Where is Izuku when you need him? Azawa muttered at the end, although he became happier knowing that his favorite problem child will be back from America by then. When they arrived at the dorms they were greeted to a lot of pizzas, chips, fizzy drinks and other fast foods. A letter was on top saying, well done guys. I saw your messages and I am proud of you guys. Train hard and I would even arrange a class dungeon to be completed. It was Momo who read it and the rest of the students were happy hearing that. All of them knew who it was as most of them only sent a message to their parents and Izuku. Next day. It was Tuesday and the school life returned to normal until the afternoon when Izawa announced something, now you will be having guests. You already met the three, but they will be telling you about internships. Ajiro asked, is it the same as what Izuku is doing? He just received a nod from the teacher until the door was flung open, revealing the big three. Mirio, the de facto leader of the big three, came up to the center and exchanged pleasantries with Shota. Getting permission, the mini All Might started. Hiya, as you already know we are the big three. I am Mirio, the shy person is Tamaki and finally Najire. They don't look like potatoes. Everyone just ignored Tamaki already kind of used to the behavior of the shy boy. Now, tell me. The future will be. An awkward silence overcame the classroom. Grim. Enki then muttered, but everyone heard him, I mean, it is already grim with the gates and the increase of villain activity. The rest of the students nodded and the class vice president stated, that is why we are here. To increase the safety of everyone. Mirio just sweat dropped, maybe if he didn't introduce himself to them during the final exams, then the reaction would be different. Anyways internships is basically being a sidekick to a hero, they help you to get stronger and teach you the way to become a better hero. Anyways, it is a better way to show you guys than sitting in your seats. He then turned to Azawa, with you permission, can we go to Gym Alpha? The Erasure hero nodded and then told the class, get into your PE uniform and meet in Gym Alpha in 10 minutes. With that everyone left with Najire being last to leave out of Big 3. Gym Alpha. The gym facilities don't really have gyms, but a massive closed of area where students could train. The actual gyms are located in a different part of the campus. Mirio stood in front of 1A who all wore their PE on Iframs. Okay, now you 20 will be facing against myself. Are you sure senpai? Wouldn't it be unfair for you? Hanta asked. Indeed, that sounds like unfavorable odds for you. Fumikage continued. The smirk was the answer that class 1A got. Anyways, ready? Go. With that 1A arranged themselves in the front fighters, mid-ranged and long-range support. Everyone was shocked when Mirio seemed to disappear into the ground and jump back near Hitashi hitting his stomach, making the boy nearly pass away. Always deal with the people with mind-type quirks. 
Then he once again disappeared. Some of the students who were near him tried to attack, but their attack seemed to phase through him. Now if I think about it, Zuku has a similar ability thanks from his Sharingan. Najira thought thinking about her boyfriend. They will have another date when he comes back and see how it goes from there. During the time Najira was daydreaming, Mirio took out the long-range attackers. Next were the long-range attackers. Using 5% of Ofa, a small nearly not visible golden aura surrounded him making his speed be faster, surprising Shoko, who nearly froze the big three member. But as everyone, Mirio hit her stomach making her go onto the floor. Hitsumi shot forward, but as her explosion went through him, she used her instincts to shot herself upwards, missing a punch from Mirio. Mirio continued the demolition of 1A, Hei and tried blocking the blonde man with her sword, but his arm passed through, but when his arm was through then he punched Hei in. Ah, Izuku cannot do that. It is either all of his being fully permeated or not, unlike Mirio. Najira thought with a frown. Baza was seeing that, he leaned down near her and asked, what's wrong? Izuku has a similar skill, but the difference is that he can only do it fully or not unlike Mirio. Najira explained, Azawa nodded to that. Hamaki heard some of it and thought, what does she mean with Izuku having a similar ability as Mirio? It was weird, he thought that Najira would be saying everything to them than keeping secrets. But himself and Mirio were too keeping secrets so he couldn't blame her. There was only a problem, Mirio was close enough to hear what Najira said. This got himself to lose concentration of both Ofa and permeation, allowing Kitsumi the last one standing to send a massive explosion at Mirio, knocking him of his feet. Ha, got you. She smirked as she jumped back. Hitsumi saw that the naked male was in a sour mood, that made Mirio not realize that he used his current maximum of 37% rushing at full speed at a wide-eye Kitsumi. She tried to get away as she knew that it wouldn't be pretty after that. The aura around Mirio intensified a lot, it was of a mid-S rank, but the visible gold sheen was seen clearly. Time was slowing down, Kitsumi who was never against a challenge was shaking now. Closing her eyes and trying to put her arms up to guard herself nothing happened. Azawa and the everyone in the gym saw that Mirio for some reason released his aura and intensified his Ofa usage. Being too late to react that saw as Kitsumi tried to get her gourd up to protect herself, Shoda also saw that some students tried doing something to protect Kitsumi, but something surprising happened. Izuku told no one except Nezu that he left a night level shadow in every 1A student, except Kitsumi, Shoko and Hei in, where he placed an elite kink just in case. Izuku also placed an elite knight in the gyres and Rumi's shadow, just in case he needed to use the skill of teleportation to get to them. What stood in front of Kitsumi was Beast, the Nomu that Izuku defeated during the USJ incident. The shadow who had the resemblance to a bird Nomu hold Mirio's fist like it was nothing. The shock nullification and the increased regeneration that increased when he reached a near high-end type also helped the shadow. Then Beast used his strength and threw Mirio to one side of the gym, then stood protectively in front of Kitsumi. Hitsumu who opened her eyes after not feeling the punch, saw that it was Izuku's first shadow he got from the outside world. Beast. She then had a light smile, even if she hated to admit it, she was thankful for Izuku for placing a shadow with her. This meant a couple of things, he placed a shadow just in case if Kitsumi bit more than she could chew, but also showed that he was worried about them, but she knew that Izuku believed that she could protect herself. Azawa went up to Mirio and asked, what was that about? That would have nearly break a lot of bones if that attack hit. My students may be strong, but that attack was overkill even for you Mirio. Mirio got out of his annoyed state and spoke in a fake sincere tone, sorry about it sensei. He bowed towards Azawa then towards Kitsumi. Seeing that, Beast returned to Kitsumi's shadow. Shaking his head of the final thoughts, he spoke, so what do you guys think? You quirk is op. Interships will help us grow. You need clothes so you won't become naked. You have a strong quirk. Mirio shook his head, originally my quirk was weak, I began to control it during my first year properly with my teacher Sir Nighteye, my quirk was called permeation. However, my quirk evolved allowing me to become stronger and faster last summer, now it is called permeation and body weight. That was a shit excuse in all honesty, but everything goes right. The strength could be said that he is putting more weight or less weight, making his speed go up or strength of his punches. As Awa then started to talk, Mirio here is one of the strongest students and an applicant for the number one hero in Japan. One student asked but stated at the same time, wouldn't Izuku become the number one? He is a national level hero, he is helping a lot of countries with the gates, and even his shadows, are helping allowing Japan to have the lowest gate deaths. That was surprisingly Mina who said this. Everyone missed Mirio's twitching eye bar as Awa and Nedri. We still don't know about his situation as he is still a first year. But yes he is one of the strongest. But in the inside, if he masters infinity and other skills he gained no one will be able to defeat him. But that the students began to leave with the permission of Azawa. 
but the big three stayed, but before 1A and their teacher could fully leave, they were stopped by the conversation that happened behind them. Ajira asked Mirio in a concerned tone, Mirio are you okay? In an annoyed tone he said, TCH, I was meant to become the strongest, but now with that Izuku, the rest of the words were lost to all as it was said under Mirio's breath. Raising an eyebrow but not letting the anger control Najire, she asked, Mirio, you still have time to grow. As you said you can nearly control 40%, imagine your power at 100%. For some reason Tamaki flinched, but it wasn't seen by Najire. Frustration was clouding Mirio's mind, after Sir Nighteye seeing the future without Izuku he believed that he will become the 10th national rank hero, become the number one of Japan. Be able to become the next All Might, the strongest. But the pressure that was applied by All Might accidentally saying things about a protege by accident, people were starting to think it was Mirio as he was working with All Might's only sidekick. He also felt bitter knowing that it was Izuku not him being close to his crush and nearly dating her, Mirio had developed a crush on Najire during the beginning of the second year, but now he didn't know. With the extra stress from people criticizing him when he wasn't looking but being able to hear it, made something break within Mirio. It may have been the stress, the anger from Izuku, frustration from Beast throwing him or even jealousy, but he would regret what he did next. So? So what? Izuku could fucking beat All Might and Maruko, and he has grown a lot. Then he was recognized as the weakest national rank hero, but now people are saying that he is on the same level as All Might the fucking strongest even without his shadows. The rise of Mirio's tone wasn't lost to 1A or anyone watching it. Azawa was looking at Mirio with a new light now, he knew after the spring break something changed in Mirio, and now he wondered if he will be told why. Mirio, calm down. Najira started to try and calm the situation, but to no avail. Calm down. Sir Knight I predicted that I will be the strongest, the light of the future, but he didn't see Izuku. He wasn't planned. I am All Might's protege, he trained me, expected me to fill his shoes, but now everyone started to look down on me. I wasn't there to help my master defeat all for one, I wasn't there to do anything to show my worth. It is all because Monarch. Anger was seeping in the tone of Mirio, with his aura rising up too. Tamaki was backing up due to Najire in Mirio's confrontation. Najire wasn't a confrontational type, but when someone shuns or says anything about her precious people, may Kami help the poor soul. Her aura was rising to new levels not seen by either boys, now it was mid-S rank level where previously it was at high air rank. It wasn't my fault that Zuku is out there helping people, heck he isn't even receiving anything but a thank you from everyone. Now you are here bitching because people are angry at you for not even protecting them from the gates or helping all might. The power that you possess is getting in your head Mirio, you think you can become a number one hero, but so far the people don't see that. Mostly it is Night Eye and possibly All Might, who cares about it anyways. She wanted to make Mirio calm down, but even at the back of her head, she doubted that what she said even worked. Not protecting them? That is what you are saying. The people should be grateful, and S rank like myself protecting them is a bonus for them. No harm will be done to them, but everyone seemed to ignore that, I am overshadowed by your precious Zuku. The two auras were clashing hard now. Grateful? Wasn't your goal to save one million people? Heroes are the ones to protect the innocent, the civilians. What have you become Mirio she said in a whisper with her hair overshadowing her eyes. This was the last straw, Mirio charged at Najire full force. Luckily she dodged and flew up with her energy waves. Mirio jumped up with a punch aimed at her stomach, but was met with an energy wave, with some explosion release being added to it. Mirio in his state of mind didn't have his permeation on, and so was hit with the energy wave that exploded when in contact with him. The shock made him hit a wall, he had wide eyes looking at her newfound ability, how? The gyre just gave a disappointed look towards Mirio, everyone keeps secret. Don't badmouth Izuku Midoriya, because he is more of a hero that you will be. With that she walked off to her Izuku's room, whilst leaving 1A, Azawa and the two remaining big three members in shock from having explosions in her waves. No one expected to see this, especially Tamaki, everyone thought that Najire was a happy but peaceful individual, but now they know not to mess with her. Najire started to have some tears in her eyes, Izuku mentioned to her that if she ever needs to go to his room when he was away then she could. When arriving she went to the bed, but before she could cry some more, she was hugged by Izuku. The walk from the plane to the agency wasn't long, they were in one of the two agencies that Star and Stripe goes between. One in the outskirts that had a landing area for planes and the other one in Washington. Star and Stripe otherwise called Kathleen was showing Izuku around happily, whilst Izuku greeted everyone with a smile and a wave. And now finally this is the area where I do my paperwork in this agency. Kath finished of the speech. Izuku nodded in wonder, this is one of the two agencies right? Yup. The other one is in Washington, I swap around there every week, so next week we will be working there. Izuku just nodded to that. 
She continued, today get some rest, you may experience some time problems as USA is a couple of hours behind Japan. Izuku just nodded and with a hug the two separated. Izuku's room was a nice and cozy place, a double bed with a closet and a private bathroom. He had a view of the landing area for the jets and planes with some hills in the background. Going to his bed, he just laid down chatting to Sass and Kalki for some time until he fell asleep. He doesn't really use them much, but he talks to them as often as he could. Izuku also sent some of his shadows around the area he was located in to report their findings. Next day. It was Monday in USA whilst nighttime in Japan when Izuku woke up, it was 6 in the morning. Getting into the shower and doing his morning preparations, he got out to get some American-style breakfast. In the food court he chatted to some of Star's sidekicks and asked general questions and how the gates were going. When it hit 7 am, he got into his hero suit which was the some black trousers, white shirt and a black cloak. There was a small difference though, as Izuku had a yellow crescent moon on one of his sleeves, in the middle of the crescent moon was a star symbolizing his internship under star and stripe. Looking good there Izuku, or should I call you monarch? Izuku just smirked, I don't mind Kath, or should I be calling you by star and stripe? His smirk widened seeing her smirk too. It was still something seeing the 6-4 woman's in her hero suit, her aura demanded respect, but in all honesty, Kath liked to be informal with her friends even during work. She just shook her head, only hero names in public hair. Huh? Izuku nodded and asked, so what is our plan for my time being here? Due to the emergence of the gates we will be doing them, but also patrolling the surrounding states, later on today we have an air rank gate to do. So we will be taking some of my new recruits whilst we will just supervise. Kath explained, she did a lot of gates in her spare time, and killed of any monsters that escaped from the gates. The crime rate is slowly going down due to the so-called villains getting their license to use their quirks or meta abilities for once, and not need to go to hero schools to use their quirks. Also we will be on the lookout for an anti-quirk group. Reports from the government spies state that they will be getting bolder soon, and with the minor chaos from the gates, that wouldn't be too pleasant. Izuku just nodded, it took the duo around 10 minutes to talk with Kath explaining. The group is called the Human Liberation Front, and they are starting getting more attention, but in the negative light. The people around the world saw that their quirks can be used for more good than evil, as guns are pretty much useless in gates they have to have a different source to kill the monsters so quirks. Izuku nodded and then asked a question, I remember Nezu saying that the government is trying to sort something against that group. It was found that they have a machian to kill of people with quirks. Izuku frowned as he said that and Star just nodded sadly. Kath knew that if Izuku was killed by that group in USA, the repercussions would be massive as the people started to look up to Izuku. Monarch became a popular figure all around the world, it was because of him that the casualty rates were lower than it should have been. But there are other things involved if Izuku dies in USA under her protection, everyone knew that Izuku is a 17-year-old and just recently started his hero career. They don't expect much, but were grateful for the help and the kindness of a national-level hero in training. So for instance if Izuku dies for some reason USA will have repercussions, other countries would believe that it was unsafe in the states, and the trading and other agreements would become null. However there is something to be gained if Izuku doesn't die, every country government and hero association knew that Japan didn't have a contract made with Izuku, so in theory he is up for grabs. That is why even with the risk of the repercussions if Izuku dies, they would have a better chance of having a national hero for help. There are laws for the national rank level heroes that the public acknowledges, that is something that every S rank hero and other heroes wish for. That being said, if one becomes a national rank hero, then there are some unwritten laws that the governments need to abide by, and Japan is doing a fantastic way of not doing them. As written before, national rank heroes can be defeated by another national rank hero, villain or an unfortunate event, in most cases it's another national rank or retirement. All Might was the strongest and is still said that he is one of the strongest in the world, but the only heroes before Izuku was Kathleen from USA and Vladimir from Russia that can contend for the number one spot. Now with Monarch being one of the strongest and making friends around the world, it will be harder for Izuku to be killed without repercussions. Now what Japan's HSPC and government failed to do yet was to establish a good relationship with Izuku, meaning if Izuku so pleases he could go to another country, ruin the economy of Japan, or start using his power for evil purposes. Luckily, Izuku wouldn't do that as he still has loved ones to care for, but even now Izuku frowned upon the HSPC, from what Nezu told him, they wanted to have a leash over him at the beginning of UA. The positives of being a national rank hero was being able to have more freedom, have a voice in the country's politics, and can have partial control over the military if they wish for. Of course there are other benefits like extra pay, but Izuku doesn't care about those at the moment. Anyways, for the next four hours Kathleen showed Izuku about paperwork, routines maintenance of the base, and familiarizing with the surroundings. 
4 pm. Izuku with his hero suit and Samahada on his back, he wants to finally try the sword if the opportunity presents itself, stood with Kathleen as she started to look towards her new sidekicks. Hello everyone, this will be your first air rank gate, as all of you have been training for me ranks to be rank gates. Monarch and myself will be accompanying you for your safety. They checked with the gate measuring device which stated it was air ranked and something interesting happened, the people who attended gates often started to feel how strong a gate was, but that could be told with experience such as Kath did. Both of us won't interfere until the situation is needed to, as everyone is prepared lets us head in. The group had 15 recruits, 8 a ranks and 7 b ranks. The group was separated by the tanks, mages, damage dealers and support. Tanks are the protections of the group, they usually have a defensive type of quirk such as hardening, or had a shield as a support item. The mages are the long and mid-range support otherwise known as long-range attackers, they usually have an emitter types, but not all of the emitter types are the so-called mages. The damage dealers have more specialistic weapons such as swords or even axes, they deal the most damage to opponents. Finally the support, they are healers and equipment carriers, they only can interfere if the situation is dire or bar the healers. For some unexpected reason, the world has started to call the people who go into gates hunters, whilst still keeping the hero in it. There is also a requirement for every so-called hunter, to have a cutting type weapon with them in all gates for their safety. You have entered a gate. Looking around, you could see that they are in a large dungeon that could even fit Fluffy. There are the old-fashioned torches on the walls every 20 meters, it was the only source of light. Suddenly they heard some movement up front and saw a pack of four jackals running towards them. One of the heavy hitters frowned and swipped his hand, causing his wind-type quirk to slash their throats, killing them. Kathleen frowned and asked, why is a C-rank monster in an A-rank gate? Izuku just walked forward and kneeled down, they have been kept here and most probably trained. Sensing that they will have company soon, Izuku said, they are most likely from a hunting party trying to check us out. Going back to the back, he received nods from the others, as it was also good information for the recruits to learn. One of the supporters then spoke, I can feel five presences, they are low air rank level monsters. She got a nod from the rest of the party, the quirk of the female hero, who said it was able to feel the vibrations through her soles of her feet. She was one of the key players in the group, as her quirk is a location finding one. The five monsters came to them looking pretty tall. Izuku recognized them as orcs, looking at the white names he internally scoffed, but allowed things to play out. High Orcs X5. The high orcs had an intimidating aura around them that caused some of the weaker B-ranks to sweat. Getting out of the shock, the group started to attack the orcs. The one with a wind ability used it to cut some muscles on one of the orcs, then a woman with a longsword rushed in and jumped slashing a monster by half. That woman's name was Zest, a high air rank, and had the ability of the manipulation of earth. Her mother has a quirk called demonic body, whilst her father had the ability to manipulate mud. With the combination of the two quirks, she looks similar to her mother gaining a minor strength boost with her speed, but her most dangerous trait is in her quirk. Zest recently discovered her love for swords, and with enhancing it with quirk, it makes it more durable and allows it to cut deeper than usual bladed attacks. She isn't wearing much protection, but her agility is higher than most, she is probably in high air rank. Izuku thought to himself. With one of the high orcs down, one other A rank female shot an arrow piercing a shoulder, allowing a B rank support to send their sentient quirk to finish of the job. With no time two other high orcs were defeated and the last one who stood at the back said something shocking everyone. Mortals, follow me. I want to see you. This came out of the high orc, but everyone realized that the monster was being controlled to say that. Should we kill it boss lady? One of the hunters asked Star and Stripe. Not yet, it will show us to the main area. If anything goes wrong Monarch and myself will protect you. Kathleen told the group which they nodded to. They continued to travel for around 8 minutes, with some light conversation occurring between the party. Zest slowed down to talk to her boss and the boss's friend. You must be Monarch. Nice meeting you. Her voice wasn't cold per se as Izuku could hear some friendliness to it. Izuku just nodded, nice attack, I am pretty sure you could take down a low S rank monster with that. Thanks. An awkward silence came before the two for some reason. Kathleen seeing this shook her head and spoke, we will be reaching the place. Nodding, everyone prepared for what will happen. It was massive, the room that they entered would fit Izuku's army and still have space for more. It seemed like they were located in some kind of arena from the looks of it. In front of them there was a big high orc sitting on a throne with four bodyguards standing around, the orc that got them to come here joined the crowd. Izuku could see that some of the hunters were shaking, but he couldn't blame them. He sensed there to be 150 high orcs and there were five orcs at a higher level than the others. Kathleen looked around seeing the 155 monsters, she wasn't worried, but knew her limits. 
Her quirk allowed her to become a national level hero, as not only could she apply it on herself, but onto others too. The gates was a weakness for her as she couldn't put the monsters through her quirk, so using the two slots she got her abilities as high as possible. Welcome to the arena mortals. The one in the throne boomed out, for some reason everyone heard a sadistic voice coming from that monster. But the creator. He had many names, the creator, father, or how his favorite the absolute being. Being older than the universe makes one bored, and that is how he created the monarchs and the rulers. Originally, the two groups fall to the enjoyment of the creator, but then when the rulers discovered that the monarchs are using innocent beings, they did something that not even the creator expected. Using all of their might and some stolen artifact from their father, all rulers died sealing the monarchs away for eons to come. There was only two miscalculations that the rulers didn't predict. Ashborn, who was on the monarch's side wasn't there during the battle, and secondly was Antares. The two were the strongest out of the monarchs, due to Ashborn not being present, the fight went better than expected, but when using the forbidden technique, Antares messed the ceiling up a little. What the monarch did was weakening the seal for it to be able to break at some time, and permanently weakening the absolute being. That is why the old man with a beard could only watch, if more power was exerted by him, then there would be nothing he could do if something similar would happen again. This is the reason why the creator sent the essence of Ashborn his most loyal child onto earth, to find someone who his powers would be bestowed upon. He is building the human resistance to the energy the gates produce, so that there would be the least amount of casualties, and hoped that the new Ashborn would be enough. Using a viewing portal made up of some kind of mist, he looked into the abyss of space to spot his other children. They were on par with monarchs and rulers, but had a different job, to keep peace whilst the absolute ruler rested or did something else. The beings had the power to destroy a planet in the blink of the eye if they so wished for, but they too went into deep sleep. Before going into the eternal sleep they managed to reproduce allowing their kids to do their duty however they were weaker. Browning seeing that one of those beings is headed towards Earth, he hoped that Izuku could deal with it in time. It is said that orcs have a scar for every battle they won, with that being said the high orcs around them had multiple scars on them. It was only Izuku who realized this as the others were new at the gates. Kargalgan the high orc great sorcerer. Bodyguard of Kargalgan. Greetings humans, I am Kargalgan. He raised his hand, and then some of the group in front of Izuku, all bar Izuku, coughed up blood, much to the shock of the two national rank heroes, even Kath coughed up some. They saw Kargalgan smirk, my magic can't be dispelled by you mortals. Star seeing that nine of her subordinates are on the floor calling up blood with the healer two being in the predicement frowned and walked forward. Why did you call us here and what do you want? Kath asked. Though she thought, this is definitely a high rank boss, even I shouldn't underestimate it. Does she want to negotiate with the boss? Izuku thought whilst looking at his friend. This is a reason why gates pay a lot. Not only the monster drops but also the crystals can be sold, but the death rate is still high. Looking around more clearly he could see bones littering the walls, but the flood of the red skin from the high orcs could overwhelm anyone's senses. Wait. Lowering his glasses so more information could come through his eyes widened at what he could sense. Talking in a voice only heard by Star and Stripe, he told, I thought there are around 150 of them, and the five on top. There are 400 of the normal high orcs and 20 higher signatures, but Kargalgam is still the highest. They could completely eliminate a small town, but this is crazy even for me. Kathleen thought with a fact. Do you not fear me? Humans. The roar of Kargalgam was heard all over the room, the white tattoos glowed an ominous blue, whilst the red eyes glowed with power. With the addition of the raising of his hand, every hero was hit with the magical energy that the beast held inside. The difference between aura and magical energy is different, but not like night and day. Whilst aura shown the general strength of an individual, magical energy release shows that the individual usually deals with spells than close-range combat. One of the melee rankers who was a tanker asked a repetitive question, why why? Why? Why did you ask for us? Even if my brethren were killed by you humans, they were only four whilst here you have a full might of the high orcs. Kargalgam then took a couple of seconds then continued, for entertainment. What? The same air anchor asked. During our remaining time here, we'll kill you one by one for my men's entertainment. A roar of approval was heard all around by the high orcs. However there seems to be something odd amongst you humans. A penetrative stare was given one Izuku Midoriya. Entertainment. That was the thought of most of the party. We are not toys to be played with. Star spoke, with that she charged up her quirk to the fullest and rushed with unholy speeds towards Kargalgam. The rest watched as their leader rushed in with a sword rushing downwards to the orc. Him of protection no one expected it, not even Izuku to see Star's attack being blocked a blue dome pushing her back. Foolish human. Even with your strength, you will be nothing in front of me. 
Cargalgum looked down at her and said, gravitation magic. The team watched in horror as Star was lifted against her own will, with a red aura around her smashing her to the ceiling, when she was going down the boss spoke, gravity acceleration. Before Cargalgum got her smashed to bits on the floor, Azuku used the skill. Sprint and caught Star in a prince's carry. A glare from the Manjeko Sharingan was what the boss received. Izuku whispered to Star, next time try not to get your anger affect you in a fight. A gentle smile appeared on his face whilst he placed her on her feet. Cracking his neck, Izuku spoke to the orcs around him with a massive smirk. He already started healing the others up, as the curse the boss gave up on them, caused a lot of blood loss to appear. One of the bodyguards was asked to take Izuku down, but with Izuku's skill and gravity, he just thrown the orc away like it was nothing. You have quite an amazing talent for a mere human, but how long will that last against all of us? What weak energy you are producing. Izuku mentioned ignoring the army comment for now. You insolent human. Kargalgam growled out. However this is a terrible matchup. Looking with his man Jeko Sharingan with a red glow he continued, for you I mean. Come forth my shadows. The commanding voice Izuku held was something to be impressed upon. Around 500 shadows came out of Izuku's shadow all ready to battle. Some were flying whilst the others were standing at attention. This energy, it is way more powerful than bosses. Zest thought, she was thankful for Izuku for healing her, and now was standing behind Izuku and his shadows. That is a lot of shadows, he could pretty much take over any country if he wanted to, and the rumors say that he continues to grow with every fight. Izuku's eyes still kept the color red whilst looking at the boss and his minions, but the boss continued to show false bravado. Trying to puck a fight with my warriors with shadows. The smirk appeared on Izuku's face, if you look down on us too much, it'll be disastrous. Then a second passed and then a wider smirk appeared showing his teeth. I wanted to test this out, it will be overkill, but trying new things won't hurt. Domain of the Monarch. Skill. Domain of the Monarch activated. The skill that he received is a mystery prize from the Heaven's Gate, he wasn't in need of this skill, but with the 155 visible orcs and the 265 other hidden orcs he would need that. Shadow soldiers fighting above the caster's shadow will have their stats increased by 50%. A job-specific skill that increased the stats by 50%, an example would be Gabriel. She was in the captain level, but with this boost she achieved a mysterious grade above her in power. A large circle of shadow appeared around Izuku spreading wide to fit his whole shadow army. Every shadow has a tint of purple in them, or had all blue turn into a purple color, indicating that their stats are higher. What just happened? Zest asked not knowing what is happening. I can't believe it. He still has a lot more tricks up his sleeve. Star muttered watching in awe. Still that is a lot of ominous energy that is coming from him. The B-rank sensor commented. What are you all doing? Destroy him already. Kargalgam yelled out to his subjects. With a mighty roar the orcs and the shadows clashed. Dadar is using the skill Mad Bomber. Multiple small clay bombs escaped from the arms of Dadara as the first wave of attack blowing the orc ranks away like it was nothing. It was soon clear seeing that the normal high orcs will stand no chance at this rate. Come in the rest. The rest of the 265 high orcs came jumping down from hidden compartments. It was still a one-sided massacre. Izuku rushed towards the boss, whilst leaving the now 20 bodyguards to his captains. Using Samahada in his right hand whilst the Kusanagi in his other hand, Izuku did the same attack as Star used with the same form of protection. Samahada ate the power away from the protection, but the grass cutter cut through the barrier like it was nothing. Argalgam his eyes widened seeing the display and received some cuts, and the right part of his body being shaved off by Samahata. This may be overkill, but it will still help them raise their level. Izuku thought to himself whilst using the Kamui ability to miss the fire attack that Kargalgam shot at him, him of the fire dragon. It was shot by a dragon's head that appeared above the boss. Summoning his spear, he threw it at a bodyguard that was too close for his liking. Some of the knights and most elite and normal have been destroyed at some point but I still have more than enough MP to keep them going. The numbers on the opponent's side was dropping like flies, which the boss took notice of. Growling Kargalgam spoke, those puppets of yours are not as useless as I thought. Izuku just smirked, sensing the plan that one of his shadows formulated. If I have enough energy then they will continue to regenerate. Then a massive smirk appeared on his face waving goodbye. Can it be, is he the buddy was cut off at the end. Kargalgam the high orc great sorcerer has been defeated. It was Toby that used his Kamui ability to go behind Kargalgan, killing the High Orc with a slash to the neck. A shame that not many opponents were national level that is what Izuku thought, but then he shook his head, as he just knew that something will happen to him. Looking back he asked the 16 others, everyone good. He looked seeing that the High Orc started to be finished off with ease. Yup, my quirk isn't the best with the gates, but against human villains. 
Anyways we should start heading out. Star mentioned to everyone. They all nodded whilst Izuku just said one word, arise with that Kargalgan, the 20 high orcs bodyguards and other high orcs, rose up turning into shadows. The party group just had their eyes widened at this. The high orcs shared the same trend, black shadowy hair, red skin with pink teeth tusks, wide eyes, and the scars turned black. I will be changing your name, you will be called Tusk from the tusks you have. Tusk LV.1, Elite Kite, High Orc Boss. 20 High Orc Bodyguard LV.20, Knight. 20 High Orc LV.4, Knight. He leveled up. Skill. Healer leveled up from LV.8 to LV.9. Skill. Weapons Expert leveled up from LV.3 to LV.4. So this A rank gate is around a level up for me. It will be slow I guess, but I still have some other keys. Izuku thought as he caught up to the group. They continued to walk out when he was asked a question from Zest, who was standing neat the two national rank heroes. How come you were not affected by the curse? Both of our power level are high enough to have some kind of regeneration factor. Izuku's is faster than mine at the moment, but that it. Star and Stripe explained to Zest who nodded. Base. All of the 17 members of the party are being debriefed by Star, whilst we knew that this gate was on a higher scale than an average air rank. If anything happens and you know that you can't defeat, run. I don't care if the gate will be still open, collect your comrades and run. Hi boss. The 15 shouted in appreciation, Izuku just nodded seeing Star speak. Star just smiled at everyone, because of the gate she had to employ more sidekicks that could help deal with the gates. Now she has three gate parties, one in Washington and two in this base. Ten minutes later after the meeting. Izuku was eating his dinner when Zest sat in front of him. Quirking an eyebrow he asked, you okay? Yes, thank you. Her voice wasn't as emotionless as before, but had a tint of happiness in it. Although her outward expression didn't change, Izuku felt the twitch of some muscles, indicating that a smile was blooming. How is Japan compared to USA? Looking at the ceiling Izuku replied, not that different surprisingly. I still need to see how the patrols differ though. Zest just nodded, after eating a couple of spoonfuls of her meal she continued, so anything interesting is happening with you in Japan. I could say that I have three girlfriends, a couple other people have a crush on me. Washington has a gate that I need to complete. Izuku thought then he said, I just started my second term of UA. My classmates just got their provisional licenses yesterday. Zest just nodded, so tell me about you, Zest right, we barely know each other. A small quirk of her lips due to Izuku remembering her name, she spoke whilst nodding, hmm what should I tell I am 20, and I just started working here before the gates appeared. I have a sweet tooth, but also recently I found a fascination with swords. Izuku nodded hearing that, what about you? I just know the bare facts that the media present. Sure. I met Star and Stripe during summer at I Island, and we became friends. I am 17 and I like to discover new things. Such as abilities of my quirk or the world. I don't really like reporters and I have three girlfriends. Izuku mentioned, but when he spoke about his girlfriends, a small smile came on his face indicating to Zest that he truly cares about them. I see, so she was cut off by Kathleen entering the dining area. Ah Izuku you are here. Hey, Zest. Star greeted them as old buddies, if you don't mind, can I steal Izuku from you? Hi boss. The devil woman agreed, but Kath could hear a tone of sadness in her voice. Sure, I will just put my tray away. With that he left. Whispering to Zest, don't worry, I will help you out. With a wink at the end. Zest just wanted to hide her face, she thought that she understood her boss. Kathleen wanted to help her out with Izuku right. In Izuku's room, an hour later. It was an hour after he spoke to Zest, Kathleen wanted to ask him some questions and some general information, but now Izuku left to his room to relax. Laying down on his bed, Sass and Kalki were eating some food whilst he was trying to expand his senses. Eyes widening seeing through Uriel's eyes, he used the skill. Shadow exchange and hugged Najire whilst Uriel was dealing with the Kwamis. It's alright Najire. I am here. Izuku said whilst Najire was hugging his body. Do you want to talk about it, or continue hugging? I don't mind as I am free. Hug at the moment. Izuku just nodded hearing a usually confident woman have a small breakdown in front of him. The monarch looked outside the window and saw it was still daytime whilst it was nighttime at USA, he continued to hug her until her soft cries turned into small snores of contentment. Izuku whispered to a shadow, wake me up if anything is happening in the USA, or after three hours. The angel on guard nodded and returned to Izuku's shadow. Two hours later. The gyre started to wake up, she just remembered what happened between herself and Mirio Tagata in the gym. Now all she could remember was her Zuzu under her whilst she is hugging him, taking all of the warmth. Opening her eyes, she saw the one Izuku Midoriya under her, the warmth he was producing was intoxicating. Izuku also started to wake up from the movements, Hey Najire, feeling better. 
Izuku asked whilst putting his arms around her making her head go back onto his chest. The only female in Big 3 heard the gently beating of Izuku's heart, with a small smile, yeah, feeling better now. Thanks. Want to talk about it? Izuku said with a whisper, even though he knew bits about what happened. Talking in a low tone, Najire told Izuku what happened. From the fight between 1A and Mirio to Mirio nearly shattering all of Katsumi's bones, but was protected by Beast. Later on the confrontation between herself and Mirio, with finally Mirio trying to get a hit on her whilst she revealed the explosion release. Izuku listened to all what she had to say and continued to hug her, whilst some of her tears hit Izuku's chest. There was one thought in Izuku's mind, he continues to learn since the sludge villain incident that Hamili and friends are the most important if we ignore hero duty. Trying to cheer Najira up, but also with the thought, I will murder you. A nice image can be seen. Due to Izuku only having a father after his mother died, he cared for his family above all else that included his friends. Now seeing Najir, a lover of his being down, yeah you see the picture. It will be alright, I am sure of it. Ignore Mirio's words, and if you want to cuddle or talk just send me a text message. I will try getting here as fast as possible, also you can continue to use my room like it's yours. The duo continued to chat whilst Izuku produced some sushi for the duo to eat, whilst they watched a movie. Now Najir was happy, they had a mini date night, cuddling, watching a movie and eating one of her favorite foods. A couple of hours later, Izuku had to bid Najir farewell as he was going to be needed in USA. The both locked their lips in a passionate exchange with the battle of the tongues happening. Due to the height difference, Izuku placed Najir's feet around his waist and continued to kiss. After the kiss and the final goodbye to Izuku, Najir had one thought only, I need a cold shower. With Izuku and Star. It was their morning talk and Kathleen asked, so what do you think of Zest? Not expecting this, the first few words came out spluttered then after compassing himself Izuku spoke, Zest seems nice, she has a good head on her shoulders, and I predict for her to break the S-rank barrier soon with her sword techniques. Other than that, I don't know, but I would want to become friends with her. Star just nodded. Why did you ask anyways? Oh nothing really. Anyways, get ready we will be heading over to the city to do some patrolling. Kathleen spoke. Izuku nodded and then started to prepare Akka. Way to top the helicopter deck for Star and Stripe. But Zest and Kathleen. The smirking Kathleen walked up to Zest and gave the secret recording to her. Here is an answer. As we both know he has three girlfriends and maybe you'll become his fourth. Zest had her eyes widen at that, why do you want to help anyways? The smile came up on Kathleen's face, he is like a younger brother I never had. Then a glare came upon a gulping Zest, so if you harm him I will end you. Then a sweet smile came upon her face, alright. Yes, I understand ma'am. Zest spoke with a small stutter. Izuku and Kathleen. In USA the patrolling system is a little different than in Japan. Due to some laws made a couple of centuries ago, a lot of people can own firearms, this is also why USA has a lot of new heroes have a stop in their career due to that fact. Luckily, the support department makes all suits bulletproof to a certain extent. She then threw a mini camera to Izuku, this small device is needed on you on all times when patrolling a city. Just in case someone wants to sue you, you will always have evidence if you ever need it. Izuku nodded and placed it over his overcoat in a hidden pocket. I am guessing you are speaking from experience. Sighing she nodded, yeah, at the beginning of my career some actor wanted money after apparently I trashed his house. It was the villain actually and when in court I showed the recording, there are other cases, but this one was one of the tamer ones. Izuku just nodded. Now with the two national rank heroes flying for round, they are sure to cause a scene, and so they did. They were in a city somewhere in California and with one hour of work they already stopped five crimes. After the hour Kath allowed some shadows to help reduce incidents, and after the next hour 23 more crimes were stopped. Izuku had his eyes wide open at the difference in crimes between Japan and USA. So that is how they continued for the day, probably the highlight of that day was stopping a small forest fire, due to one kid accidentally burning a tree. Now the news knows that Monarch is interning under Star and Stripe. During the day, the two became closer. Not in a romantic way but more of a sibling way, the teasing remarks to the competitive spirit that can only be formed by siblings was occurring. Izuku was happy that he had found someone that he can call a sister figure. With the creator. Looking over the land of peace, otherwise known as his domain. He sat alone on his chair thinking about his oldest creation, the one who was the most loyal to him until his death. Ashbourne, I hope your legacy is pleasing you. The boy is making waves on earth, but soon he will know about you and the gift I have given you. With love. After the defeat of Afo, Shigaraki and his group went into hiding and trying to level up as Tamura liked to say. The doctor that was like the left hand man to Afo, didn't contact them yet, so now they were left on their own. 
They of course entered the dungeons and my oh my, it was a sight to see seeing the members of Love being free. The use of their quirks to adapt to the monsters was something to see, even if they tried to befriend some, that too didn't end up well. The Murray sighed as he read an article about his rival Izuku in USA. He still couldn't help but smile with what Izuku gave him. Flashback. Whilst Izuku and All Might was facing of against All for One, Tamura and his group were watching their sensei battle it out. When Afo made Kurijiri's quirk active, Izuku used this chance to make a node become invisible and use gravity manipulation to place it in a pocket of the new leader of Love. After having a chair turned to dust, he noticed something in his pocket, so he added. Tamura Shigaraki. I am sorry about your sensei, but I hope we can still be rivals. I know that I was holding back whenever we met each other, but I hope you train and become the strongest villain. I want to have a rival, I am bored limiting myself. You might ask why would I want a villain to become strong? It is simple, I know all for one helped you expand your hatred, but life isn't fun with only hatred. So instead of focusing on destroying the world, train and become stronger, so when we will clash our battle will be told to the future generations of the battle between the gods. Izuku, Aka. Monarch. It was a surprise a hero wanted to help a villain become stronger, but he just smirked and placed a piece of paper in his pocket. He will happily become stronger and become one of the two gods that Izuku mentioned to him. Flashback end. Since the day Afo has been defeated, Tamura continued to train, but now he was sighing as the meeting with Overhaul went worse than he thought. Twice brought him to their current hideout and after some talking, shit hit the fan. The bird face leader wanted to combine love with his group of Yakuza under his name not Tamura's. A small battle ensured with Mr. Compress losing an arm and Himiko's equipment becoming destroyed. Now he had to think of a way to make the situation more favorable in his direction. Skill. Healer LV.9, active. Then heal up to advanced injuries with the possibility of regrowing missing organs and cells. The current speed is fast 15 mana per second. Skill. Weapons expert LV.4, passive, evolved. The passive skill that gives you 60% more experience when using weapons of any kind, and a plus 10% speed boost when using a weapon in combat. Skill. Domain of the Monarch. Dob specific skill. No mana required. Shadow soldiers fighting within the shadow of their summoner will receive a 50% stat increase. Monday second week of internships. It was a fun week for Izuku, the relationship between Izuku and Kathleen cultivated into a stronger sibling relationship. Izuku leveled two of his skills up Black Whip and Infinity, to see Star go face first into the barrier in a spar was something to laugh at. Skill. Infinity leveled up from LV.1 to LV.2. Skill. Black Whip leveled up from LV.3 to LV.4. He summoned most of his shadows and actually gave the Orb of Liberation to Tusk, as he was the main heavy magic user. The magicians were technically stronger but they were just harder to kill compared to Tusk. Now the duo was in Washington DC, District of Columbia, the duo took Zest and another air rank hero with them. Being Monday during a school week, not many people were on the streets as compared to the traveling hours for work. This being Izuku's day off, he told the three others after they unpacked that he will be going to look around as he never been to this part of America. Wearing his usual glasses and a surgical mask on his face so he would be recognized less. Getting out of his normal black and white outfit, he got some black jeans and a green oversized hoodie. Putting some earphones in, he started to walk towards the Washington Monument. Firstly going into an alleyway he used his skill. Stealth and getting a black key out he placed it in front of the monument. The key had a spearhead on the end with two side ends on top. Item name. Truthgate key. Item class. Type. Key. This must be done alone. Secrets will be revealed that cannot be told to anyone. Location in Washington Monument. Without anyone knowing, he was sucked in, and the gate closed shortly after he opened it. What he saw was darkness, then suddenly red eyes began to be seen all around him. You have entered a gate. Torches began to illuminate around the now revealed cavern, the blue flame spaced just a meter, but higher than even Fluffy could reach. The light produced the shadows of the monsters to appear allowing the red glowing eyes to be dimmed. Izuku could only see warriors and musicians all around him made of stone. Straight in front of him sat a large figure with a crown made up of stone, Izuku saw that next to the man sitting on the throne was a stone angel with a tablet, the hood was covered, not allowing Izuku to see its face. All the statues had some moss and cracks covering their body, but Izuku wasn't fooled to their power. It all began here a voice was heard from all around, the green at couldn't locate it, but stepped closer to the middle of the hall. Why can I feel it? Am I scared? Izuku thought to himself, he didn't have this feeling for a long time, but he didn't like it. These statues are not monsters or even living beings, now he walked closer to one and saw the height difference which was large, but he frowned, are they merely puppets? The power that fills this room only comes from one source. 
Walking up to his statue, he spoke, you are the true source. Won't you say anything? The Sharingan started to spin in its base form in his eye, for some reason I feel I recognize you, but I don't know how or when. At last, you have made it this far. The statue had its eyes wide open with its mouth showing a grin that even sent shivers down Izuku's back. It continued to speak, but now the three pairs of its stone wings sprout out with some cracks to be heard, the six wings were larger than even Gabriel's own. The stone tablet started to crack, finally you have arrived. With that the tablet broke into hundreds of pieces. He broke it just like that. Izuku wondered to himself, so the rules that I just read meant nothing, heh. Oh it does mean something. But now it doesn't matter. The stone angel spoke. Are you the one who called me here? Izuku asked his so-called opponent. With a creepy grin, it replied yes. Are you a monster? He had to ask this question. That is the wrong question. Continuing to grin at Izuku, it continued, rather than asking what I am, you should be asking what you are. Its hand started to clap making the other statues to start moving. This will be your test. If you have managed to stand with your own two feet at the end of this test. Then everything you've wished to know will be revealed on you. That. Will be my reward for you. With that the stone statues started to march towards Izuku. Hum forth. Shadows started to appear under Izuku for his army to come out. Not that way. This is the place of testing. It replied with a snap of his fingers, Izuku got a notification. For the duration of the final test, all of your class-specific skills have been sealed. The only thing I want to test is you. I am not curious about the capabilities of your servants. A frown appeared on Izuku's face, but he still kept his Sharingan activated, he needs the advantage of any skill to win this battle. Usage of various potions and the store's functions have been disabled. The status recovery effects from leveling up and quest completion bonuses will be inapplicable during the duration of the test. What? Now Izuku had his eyes wide open at this. You cannot exit in this chamber until the end of the final test. So you want to play it like this? I will show you why I am not called one of the strongest for nothing. With that he cracked his neck and activated his Manjeko Kamui becoming permeable. A sword passed through seamlessly through Izuku's body, shocking the angel. What? I did not plan for the system to allow other skills than Ashborn had. The angel thought with some panic. Summoning his spear in Kusanagi, he threw the spear with his left hand with the skill. Spear throw whilst using a new skill on Kusanagi that he found out recently, Elongation. With it becoming elongated, it cut through one soilder, whilst the spear crushed the head of another. Using his free hand he caught another sword with a minor application of skill. Limitless and then crushing the sword in two. Throwing his sword at another warrior, he used his enhanced strength smashing a soldier who tried to escape for naught. The sword didn't kill the soldier, so using the skill. Gravity manipulation he pushed the sword further in and created a red ball of energy that he sent out crushing the soldier with its immense pressure. Jumping away from an axe, he had to block it with his dagger's Aka. Vampire killer and T-Rex dagger in an X-shaped position, so he wouldn't be wasting MP. Pocket with it he sent a massive wave of fire that he later got the shadows from the fire making spikes impaling the soldiers, killing half a dozen. Bringing Black Whip, he sent two tendrils each at two opponents, making the duo smash into each other after being tied up. Using his gravity manipulation, he brought Kusanagi and the Lance of Longinus to his hands. Jumping up once again, he sent out two red balls of energy at a group of moving soldiers destroying them. Just used 1600 more MP for those two attacks. Though he was still had over 25,000 MP left. Using stealth, he sneaked up upon the last embers of the stone army, and using vital strike, hit the last three soldiers killing them. You've grown a lot in this human body. It is really great growth. But in the inside he was frowning, how did this human obtain this much strength, he is nowhere near him, but it is impressive netherless. But he continued, however this was too easy for the test to even end. You like to talk. Izuku grumbled, but then his attention went towards the massive statue that was there sitting and watching over the battlefield. The height of the ceiling, a massive sweat drop appeared on Izuku's face. The white crack appeared on the angel's face, now, it's time to worship God. Then more statues started to the robe under the supposed God. Is there no end to them? Then the eyes of the largest statue began to glow and two laser that were centered at Izuku were shot. Using spring to get away, he was able to push some of the soldiers into the line of action where they eventually turned into nothing. Danger? Wait what? For some reason the warning he received allowed him to dodge a spear thrown from behind. New skill has been discovered. Skill. Danger, sense LV.1, passive. A subconscious ability, and the third gift from All Might's predecessor. It warns of the user of danger, may it be an attack to the oneself or near them. I need to deal with the giant. After a quick second a smirk appeared, the best way to deal with a gaint is to be one yourself. Then saying out loud, Susanu. 
With that a black ethereal figure started to be present using 5000 MP. Becoming as tall as the statue, Izuku used his feet to crush the remaining minor statues, and then with its hand prepared a punch that the large statue tried to block. Cracks started to appear, and with Izuku applying more pressure to the large puppet, it started to be pushed backwards. Finally, using the spear he manifested, Izuku stabbed it in the chest of his opponent and pulled it down, allowing Izuku the win over the so-called god. How? The angel thought. Izuku had other thoughts, this power, it's just a little bit, but I can feel it. I think I'm growing several times faster than normal. With false bravado, the angel stated, so you've countered my creation in such a way. Incredible. It started to clap once again. Keep your promise. Izuku stated walking up to the angel. Ahaha. Ha. The test isn't over yet. Look, I'm still standing aren't I? It stated. An emergency quest has started. I am the final test. It spread its arms apart in a come here motion, with a notification being sent towards Izuku. Your heart will stop if you do not defeat the enemy in the allotted time. Time remaining. 10 o'clock. Who the hell are you? Izuku asked with a frown on his face. Time remaining. 9.58. I told you that was a silly question. Fine I'll answer you. Me? I am the creator of the system. This was said as the same time as a message was sent. I am the creator of the system. Are you satisfied with my answer? The angel asked, whilst its face started to crumble, revealing a wider face without the cracks from the stone. Are you satisfied with my answer? Outside at the monument in Washington, D.C. Shivers were going down everyone's spines, like a sweet embrace from death itself holding its scythe to your neck. Mama, what is this feeling? A young child asked whilst trying not to freak out. Her mother is no better, I am not sure honey, it would be better if we leave this place. With that she picked up her girl in her arms, and fast walked off with others doing the same. One of the civilians, someone called the heroes, this feeling isn't good. Inside the secret gate. The wings started to go into themselves turning into three more pairs of arms, similar to Mizo's quirk. Danger. With speed that barely were seen by the Sharingan, the creator of the system rushed at Izuku, and with five hands tried to smash into Izuku's chest. He was lucky that he had Limitless activated otherwise he would have some bones splattered, but apparently the level of the technique allowed Izuku to be pushed back a little from the force of the punch. After that Izuku that had Limitless still active, went into a quick hand-to-hand -hand fight with the creator. Not wanting it to get the upper hand, he summoned Samahada and tried to get some energy out of the monster. Quickly turning Limitless off, he used some of his MP to grow trees blocking the movements of the ex-angel, with using fire manipulation to burn everything stuck in the binding embraces of the trees. Due to using a perfect Susanoo and having to use Limitless for an extended period of time, he had to resort to skills that barely need MP. Danger. Using the basic form of gravity manipulation, he pulled himself out of the way with sending some black whip to try and ensnare his opponent up. My, my. You're exceeding my expectations. Izuku used sprint to maneuver out of the way of the creator just in time to miss an earth-shattering punch. For some reason, the red from the Sharingan started to merge with the blue of his system eyes causing a deep purple to be emitted from his eyes. With this unexpected boost, he landed a punch in the creator's face. It doesn't matter. Whether you kill me or not the answer that you will receive has already been decided. The figure stretched its arms out with them grabbing eight weapons from axes to swords to spears. How were you able to plan everything? And was it you who sent gates on earth and only keys? He then summoned his spear and the vampire killer into his hands. It wasn't me actually. I am simply the designer of the player leveling system, my plan was perfect until that gate. The almighty creator helped you out, which my calculations didn't account for. It continued to speak. Time remaining. 616. Danger. Let us fight to the utmost in the remaining time. The voice came from above, a purple sheen was covering the body of the designer, whilst all of the weapons were headed straight for Izuku. Jumping back, the designer missed but jumped straight towards Izuku. What's this? My senses are getting sharper. I can do this. This battle was taxing for Izuku, his HP dropped by 6500, with some bleeding occurring, with his MP being lower than usual too. Sword, spear, slub, axe, hammer. I can feel it. Moving a step back, his movement so this is the power of the Sharingan. He is blocking and dodging my attacks with his own power. The designer thought with some worry as some of his body started to crack. He is getting faster. Slash that was heard when Izuku maimed an arm of the designer. Erg. A groan came out of the body of Izuku's opponent. To make me struggle even if this body is a fake body. Then he looked at Izuku's eyes, I see. He didn't care about the Sharingan but the passion, the perseverance and the strength. There's a reason why you were chosen. It's just a little bit but he has it. Another arm was cut off from the architect's body, you're just a mere human. How dare you. 
Time remaining. 345. The bodies of all fallen soldiers started to rise up, including the larger body of the one he defeated with Susanoo. Time remaining. 338. Time remaining. 329. Total pressure using the skill. Gravity manipulation infused with MP, everything in the 200 meter radius fell onto the floor bar the ex-angel. The gravity of the situation wasn't felt by the angel. Using only 2300 MP for this attack, he rushed towards the angel cutting two more arms with the elongated kusanagi. Then the architect pushed Izuku backwards making him hit the wall. Danger. Izuku rolled out of the way of a spear, and quickly he had to use the manjeko permeation technique to dodge a sword strike. Time remaining. 240. With a quick jump, he elbowed a soldier's head that was remade by the architect and threw his long inus towards the mastermind, getting another two arms cut off. A massive collision was heard as Izuku was now pointing the kusanagi to the throat of the architect. I lost. The test is over. Time remaining. 232. The answer is inside you. It pointed towards the one who defeated him. Inside me? Izuku asked confused. I will give you the choice. A creepy grin was settled on its face. The data stored in your memory will be retrieved. Will you accept? The data stored in my memory a neutral expression was plastered on Izuku's face as he considered it. Yes. I accept. Data was retrieved successfully. The gold light was produced from where the architect was laying, Izuku's hair was blown backwards due to the intensity of the pressure being emitted. Memories. Purple skies, with dark clouds on the horizon. The earth was only rock with no greenery, the only thing you could see was the monsters marching to a direction. A white translucent figure of one Izuku Midoriya could be seen hovering above the monsters, with one thought in mind, there are so many monsters gathered here. Then when the monsters were suddenly looking up, Izuku turned to that direction and had his eyes wide open. A massive white portal from the skies opened up, then another and another. On ground there are monsters such as the elves, orcs, goblins and the giants. If all the monsters here came out of a gate at once, humanity doesn't stand a chance. However the ones they were facing were not humans. When cracks appeared in the portals, white feathers came out with hundred thousands, if not millions of angels came flying down. There was one faceless one leading them all, the other angels had some kind of metal on their face masks. There are more angel types. In truth the monsters combined their strength to fight the angel type of monsters. This is war. The sound of weapons clashing and armor breaking was deafening. Shouts of victory soon turned into screams and groans, and the ground was dyed red. The angels were too strong, so after the complete annihilation of the monsters seemed inevitable, the advancement began to stop, one by one. The man riding a horse in all black with black and purple shadows came closer, one simple command that Izuku knew arise. With that the monsters all rose up and with the monarch's territory, a new army was formed. He is the previous shadow monarch. Izuku thought to himself. The immortal army of voice once again was heard from all around Izuku. The monsters' sacrifices did not end with death, and their blood was dyed dark to create this power. This is incredible, I am nothing compared to him. The monsters crawled out from the brink of death and rushed towards the silver soldiers. Both armies entwined on the battlefield with the monsters not losing as badly as they cannot be killed, so it became a one-sided massacre. An appearance of a single individual changed the tide of this war completely. Once again the command arise was said, now the angels who perished against the monsters, rose up to fight against their old comrades in arms. The gravitational pull that Izuku has was seen used as the previous monarch crushed some of his enemies into paste. At the end no angel remained, and the faceless mask went back to where it hid. Outside the gate. The authorites that came to felt the buildup of ungodly amounts of power coming from the memorial. Star and Stripe even appeared due to Izuku texting, he will be near the memorial beforehand, and now she couldn't even contact him. Some of her sidekicks also came including Zest and surprisingly the playboy hero. Captain Celebrity the current number 8 hero of USA appeared too. What's this? The voice sounded from all around them, making everyone freeze and look around. I don't remember inviting humans in this area. Of course it is an external affair after all. A blue portal the size of the tower opened up, with a figure coming outside frightening a lot of the onlookers. Monsters can told. The monster understands human speech. A couple of peel past sweating bullets. Hush now. Yul interrupts the king's slumber. A teasing but scary grin appeared on the architect's face, he also had his finger over his mouth in a hush-hush position. King? Kathleen asked. Come in if you dare. You will see the king soon awaken. With that the monster went into the gate, confusing some of the onlookers. Where is Izuku when you need him? Kathleen asked to no one in particular. It was a surprise seeing who answered, darling is inside already. It was Gabriel, the only shadow that asked to go look around and stay with Izuku. Why are you not with him? Star asked. 
Frowning, I couldn't sense Darling, even if he is in a gate I could usually feel him, but before now I couldn't find him. With that Gabriel went into the gate, followed by Kathleen and Captain Celebrity. Some people shrugged and went inside. Monarch? What is he doing over there? One hero asked, they saw Izuku standing with a purple glow around him looking down at the crater. When the people saw his eyes they saw that he wasn't in the real world for some reason. Darling? What did you do to him? The angel asked the monster. Then a slash came from the architect, but was blocked by Gabriel's sword, not allowing anyone to be cut. You are a strong servant. You will be a fine use for the king. Gabriel just frowned hearing that. With Izuku. What he thought he could see was the previous life or the origin of power he held in the person in front. Dark grey metal armor with purple tints coming from some sides. But then Izuku realized that two portals of the color of red and blue appeared. Demons. Is it the opposite side of the angels, like did they have a tower too? After the demons appeared a large white wolf with red eyes come next, it was three times the height of Tusk. In front of the white world were hordes of animal type monsters or beasts. For some reason the army of the white world was standing opposite Ashbourne, what is happening? Then the formed gate. Gather all of your power. Star shouted, move the injured to the back of the ranks. During the minute after the declaration from the architect, hell broke loose. Luckily no heroes were killed but injured yes. It was from mainly from Gabriel and Kathleen being able to slow the monster down with Captain Celebrity, helping with long-range support. Suddenly the broken figures of the armored statues began to form with each other forming the warriors. Shit, the statues are coming closer. Captain shouted to everyone. I will give you all a chance to watch the glorious king's birth. The architect spoke whilst the large figure of the throne statue stood up ready to attack. Which will be when all of my puppets have been destroyed. This is also provided any of you are still alive by then. A grin appeared on the largest statue with its eyes beginning to glow. Everin Dodge Kathleen shouted. With that they tried to move, but with Gabriel's protection spell Guardian Mirror, most of the death rays were sent to another direction. Whilst that was happening, Zess tried to punch one of the statues, but nothing happened. It's stronger than I thought. These bastards, their physical resistance ins normal. One of the elemental heroes shouted. Everyone be careful. Kathleen barely smashed one statue in pieces, I gave a lot of power into that attack. It barely broke. The only shadow produced thousands of light rays above her and started to shoot down the stone statues including the architect. Some of the statues crumbled once again and some were maimed, but it only gave a couple of seconds for a breather. It was another minute where all but Gabriel started to become more and more tired, I hate to say it, but we will need bro to help us. I cannot put more strain into my muscles. Kathleen thought as she still saw Izuku's body standing in front of the crater. Is he under some control? Zest thought, but in a mutter she said, we need you awake. With that she sent a stone boulder at Izuku, but was blocked by the architect himself. You dare attempt to interrupt the king's slumber. The statue said to them. Zest, get darling awake. I will use my full power to keep the statue at bay. Gabriel's voice sounded out but a little different. Her true form, that can access their full power was shown, but with a minor illusion no one saw it properly. The twelve wings spread wide with a sword in one hand ready to fight for her darling. Skill. Infinity LV.2, active. Allows you to distort space and time at will. Main function is to make an infinity around you so no one and nothing can touch you. 500 MP to activate and 95 per second to keep up. Skill. Black Whip LV.4, active. No MP required, the second gift of the six from All Might's predecessor. Produces a shadowy substance with hints of green that can be used for capture, swinging and more. Attack. Gravity field manipulation. Name. Total pressure. MP. 1500 MP plus. Fatigue. 2 per min. A technique that spreads the gravity around the field up to a certain radius. This allows you to control how much gravity can be as small as 0 newton kg, and to a higher gravitational pull, depending on the MP used. Zest, get darling awake. I will use my full power to keep the statue at bay. Gabriel's voice sounded out but a little different. Her true form, that can access their full power was shown, but with a minor illusion no one saw it properly. The twelve wings spread wide with a sword in one hand ready to fight for her darling. Present. If anyone could see Gabriel, she had a blank mask on with white and black robes with some metal protection. Her wings had gotten a small metallic tint to them, and the power she was producing was of a national level opponent. Pushing herself of the ground, she collided with the architect cracking some of his arms. Zest rushed closer and closer to Izuku, reaching her hand out. With Izuku's memories. Why are the monsters fighting against the shadows? That was the thought he had. It seemed to him that Ashbourne had enemies on all sides. The shadows keep resurrecting even after being torn apart like that. If it were my current self, the magic would have killed me. 
Izuku couldn't even feel the power coming from Ashbourne, that is how powerful that man is. Internal conflict of some sort. Then he heard Ashbourne speak to the leader of the defeated side, we could have ended the fighting today. Why have you chosen to betray me? An unbly smirk appeared in the opponent's face, what a waste. I could have ended you. I asked why. Ashbourne had his eyes narrowed looking straight into the other person's soul. The haha, wingdings. Ashbourne quirked an eyebrow, wingdings. Getting pissed, he used his gravity power to catch the opponent's neck. The final word that came out of the soon-to-be dead opponent was, wingdings. Then death came to Ashbourne's enemy. For some reason, Izuku's point of view changed to Ashbourne's, huh? How why didn't I notice until now? Then Izuku's hand slowly moved to his chest, that is where some kind of beating was occurring. Izuku then looked back to see four angel-type figures. The recall data has finished. In the gate. You're fun to play with, very fun. Architect complimented Gabriel. Then as he thought Zest would go to Izuku, she turned back and placed her hands of the floor, making pillars of earth shoot at the architect, nearly crushing the monster. A puny trick. When will you finish already? Humans are no fun, no fun at all. By design predicts and responds to any result. Star was just catching a breath as she produced a vacuum area in front of her trying to affect the monster, but to no avail. These small attacks have no chance of breaking my design. Zest took this chance to actually try and wake up Izuku, though the monster was fast enough to catch her, even if the distance to Izuku was around 2 meters. Luckily for Zest, she was able to jump away from the arm that descended upon her. You're pretty good avoiding it all. Then his eyes widen as something, more shadows. So the king assigned a soldier to her. How did this one find this place ignoring Gabriel presence? Then looking at Zest closely, what is your relationship with Izuku Midoriya? Friends. She spoke whilst wiping some blood of her face. We are friends. I'm here to save Izuku. Was that not the king's intention? Fine I will give you a chance. Today, one of the great monarchs is going to descend upon this world. Izuku's aura started to grow every second, purple wisps of energy started to leak from his body. I will give you the chance to witness this glorious scene. But for everyone else. It was chaos for them, especially Gabriel taking the front of the attack with Star and Captain Celebrity. They will all die where they stand. According to whom? A voice spoke out. The architect looked questioning. Then a powerful fist of energy descended upon the architect's face. You, what did you do to my body? Purple smoke came out of Izuku's body with his eyes having a deeper purple in them, with an occasional ring or two being seen. Everyone had their eyes widen at Izuku, but most of them had smiles seeing that they will live another day. Izuku was crushing the architect's face under his foot. You're not the king. How could you stand in that place instead of the king? How can you maintain your ego while having a black heart? The architect asked. Black heart. Is this incredible magic thanks to this heart? Izuku thought to himself. The conditions have been met. You have remembered how to defeat both heavenly and demonic armies. The power has acknowledged you as its owner. Effect. Black heart plus 100,000 MP. MP. 131,310. It is obvious from his reaction that he didn't mean to bring out the black heart and the black heart ins supposed to make me stronger. The data he recalled didn't answer my questions. I still haven't heard everything. Then with a slight narrowing of his eyes, you said you were opposed to choosing me as a player. But what exactly is a player? What were your intentions? No shadow monarch, you do you think the other monarchs will just stand by and watch? Architect shouted. The only response was Izuku summoning all his weapons and pointing them at the architect with his gravity powers on full display. Just answer my questions. The haha it wasn't supposed to turn out this way. I think I know why you were chosen. The other people in the gate looked around at the statues, ah. What? T the statues. Then someone spoke, the statues that were still are starting to move. Ha! Ah, if you kill me, no one will be able to stop my puppets. Will you still kill me? The confidence in architect returned, but what Izuku said next shattered that belief. What if I kill you first, and then your puppets? If you kill the creator of the system. I could go back to being a quirkless person huh? I've thought enough about that too. But even if the system's creator disappears the system that's already been created won't fall apart. Architect's eyes widened at what he was seeing. The system has blocked the creator's axes. 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 How can the system this was bad news for the, the system's creator, as no he has no control over it. Yes, I've thought about that too. I said I'll devour the system, but it seems that your design had flaws. No. You. It screeched but all of the weapons started to slash, stab and skin the architect, prediction no. The prophecy. When the pillars of fire are built the heavens an inevitable death shall find you. Of course with that the architect died. 
Outside of Washington Memorial. They have been there for over an hour. A B-rank hero stated. Just what happened there? A policeman asked. Then a group started to get out of the portal. Before Gabriel left she kissed Izuku's cheek and went into his shadow. Can you help us, a lot of us are injured. Star asked to the medic team that was there on standby. Injured? Yes yes of course. Some officers said. The system that architect built is gone, but now the system is under my ownership. And I still don't have all of the questions answered. Izuku thought as he walked out of the portal with his shirt pretty cut up and bleeding from his head a little. 60% of the top ranked heroes are injured, some nearly on their deathbeds. Luckily our staff are healing them up. If this was a dungeon break the extent of the damage would be unimaginable. Star spoke to Izuku. And you tried to stop this all alone. Luckily no one died, but I still must become stronger, so this won't happen to anyone close to me. Then Izuku spoke to his boss for the three weeks, I only survived thanks to your guys' help, we are lucky no one died here. Kathleen nodded, it was surprisingly Gabriel who made that no one died here, but how did you find this particular gate? Sighing Izuku explained, the dungeon, it summoned me here. It summoned you here? She asked unsure what to make of it. In a quieter tone he spoke, yes, I received a message telling me to come here. Can we view the message, as well? I'm sorry, it's a message only visible in my head. Izuku explained. Path just sweat dropped, he isn't lying or doesn't seem to atlist. Zest came over and asked, are you alright? Although she had a small blush seeing his figure. Yes, I'm fine thank you no, maybe just a little tired. Monarch. Some voices were heard around the plaza as Izuku fell, but luckily Star caught him. Three days later. Opening his eyes, Izuku felt something next to him and moving his head he saw Gabriel hugging him, is this a hospital? He asked whilst looking around. Darling. Gabriel said when she felt Izuku moving around, Izuku gave her a smile which she just jumped on him and gave a kiss to Izuku. I missed you. Thank you Tenshi. Izuku continued hugging her. Anything interesting happened. Except the news about the gate three days ago, the nothing. Gabriel answered not telling him about the waves of message Izuku received. Sadly she had to answer to her rival and her darling's other girlfriend who was worried. The anger on Rumi's face after Gabriel mocked her during the phone call was hilarious to be seen. So I was asleep for three whole days. Izuku asked knowing the answer. I was worried sick, darling Gabriel muttered pushing herself on Izuku whilst hugging him. Three days seems like the mental fatigue had accumulated a lot. I also didn't rest for a long while too also on top of that I can't get the scene of what the architect showed me out of my head. Getting his head in the game he asked, what about the others and Star? Ah, well they were treated by myself after you became conscious. Other than that, most of them are on leave for a small period of time. Izuku nodded to the explanation. 30 minutes a nurse came in and gave Izuku breakfast. After that she notified Star who sped towards Izuku's room. Kathleen nearly broke in the door and crushed Izuku in an embrace, he just patted her back and had some small talk. You feeling better? Yeah, I think I needed the rest. Now I am ready for action. Kath just shook her head. Today, you will continue to rest. We have three days left in Washington DC and we will be patrolling and closing some gates, but that will be it. Nothing to strain us. Tuckling, Izuku nodded. Kathleen left soon after to do some paperwork whilst during the day Izuku got out of the room and conversed with other members of the raid, thanking them. Next day. We will be doing a B-rank gate, with the both of us it should be easy. Kathleen explained. Ten minutes later, the blue gate turned red with only the two inside, Izuku gave her a deadpan expression, I jinxed it, didn't I? Sighing, Izuku cracked his back ready for some action, at least I can use my shadows for this gate. On the outside. For fuck's sake star you jinxed it and now it's an S rank 8, one of the government workers shouted, causing others to sweat drop. They should be fine right? Zest asked. One of the sidekick spoke, Monarch and Star and Stripe will be fine, what will an S rank 8 do to them, when both don't need to look out for any casualties? The realization made them all sweat, this could really go really well or to hell, just in they knew. Inside the gate. You have entered a gate. Feeling the energy around the Mizuku side, so S rank red gate. The last one was around low to mid S, I wonder what strong opponents will be here. Star just looked at Izuku, yeah, my luck is shit. So this is a red gate, a proper wasteland here. Huh? Izuku just nodded, looking around it seems to be a wasteland. Fires from buildings with lava spraying out from different locations. So let's get the boss and get out. Otherwise we will spend days here. Isn't a day here an hour outside? Izuku just nodded. The duo walked for 20 minutes until a group of unidentifiable monsters came close to them, they all wore black garbs that hid their appearance from the world. They all carried some kind of weapon and had an aura of an A-rank monster, but their color was light gray in Izuku's eyes. Protectors of Limbo. 
So the protectors of Limbo are here. Then I guess we are in the eight circles of hell, with the first being Limbo. Izuku spoke out loud shocking Chathleen. What happened was them rushing towards them to attack, bad for them as dealing with two national rank heroes was a hard job to accomplish. Star took out 13 whilst Izuku took 12, but when Izuku tried to make them arise a notification was sent. You cannot save the shadows, the energy they are producing is corrosive. I guess I can't make them into my shadows. Oh well, come forth. With that the shadows got out of Izuku's shadow and bowed to him, smiling at them, clear the path for the second circle. Path just shook her head, with his army, it would be as easy as cutting a pie. Oh shit, I jinxed it. They continued to walk with them dealing with more and more protectors of Limbo, even if they were an A-rank monster their teamwork could easily take down a S-rank hero. It was just some time later when they would be able to see a light at the end of the tunnel, otherwise known as the first circle of hell. I don't think anyone would survive this bar national rank star commented as she punched a face off from one. Izuku nodded and used his black whip to make two of them hit each other, allowing a shadow to smash them into pieces. The thing he now is realizing is that Igris is far away from them, using the full possibility of his sword. This made Izuku's eyes widen, his spear gives an extra plus 200 against God's enemies so devils, like with Igris, and his side effect cleansing he can cut through hordes of monsters at a time. Igris was sixth strongest shadow in his army, and if you would ask the shadow he would prefer to be near his liege's side. So it was slowly but surely leveling up at a faster rate than Baruka to hopefully overtake the Pain and Toby duo. The eighth cycle of hell, the first is Limbo, the next is the Circle of Lust. And so with them being able to find the entrance to the next level the duo with the shadows saw tornadoes made of fire all around them with devils flying around. Those devils both female and male, barely had any skin coverage, only hiding their private areas, but were of S rank strength. Devil of Lust. Amic 1. The news stations like to spread fire with fire, and so they said, we have reports that a student from UA can give people quirks or skills. This was told to us by a drunk Maruko. Izuku who was watching the news looked at Rumi who was sweating under the gaze of Izuku. As you can see Maruko can use telekinesis. Then a clip of her using it to pull multiple villains towards her. I should run. Both of them ask at the same time but different reason for it. Rumi as she told the fucking news what Izuku can do and for the green that he heard people rushing towards them. He opened his phone and got a message from a random classmate of his from Eldera, Izuku read out loud, Hey bro, remember when I gave you the pencil to use three years ago? Can you please give me a super cool quirk please? Then a portal opened, Ah here is my best friend, you will be giving me all of your skills onto me. Tamura stated with a creepy smile, we can play games. He waved a video controller. Itsumi then shot into the room, nerd, what the fuck is happening, and why didn't you tell me? Endeavor then shot in, you will be giving me the power to defeat All Might. Izuku and Rumi looked at each other, then had their mouths wide open, as a gooey substance teleported them to Afo who recently broke out of prison. Ah Izuku, Maruko. You can heal me up and give me some skills. I promise I won't attack you anymore. Izuku took the hand of Maruko and said, fuck them all. Then bought a teleportation skill and not reading it full teleporting them to a new verse. What the fuck? There are ninja here. Maruko shouted as they were in the middle of Madara Echeha and the Shinobi Alliance. Who are you two? Madara quirked an eyebrow. Are we interrupting something? Izuku looked around and saw most people sweat drop. No, you are not. We are definitely not in the middle of a war. Kiba and Izuku yelled out. Both Rumi and Izuku blinked, the fuck? How did you teleport us here? Don't ask me Izuku explained in his defense. Boy, Whiskers who is the guy in the red armor? Rumi yelled looking at the brightest uniform in the Shinobi Alliance. Who are you calling whiskers you rabbit? Naruto shouted out. That was a shit comeback. Izuku spoke out loud. I agree with you, what is your name? Madara asked from the top of the hill. I am Izuku and this is my girlfriend Rumi. Who may you be? I am the ghost of the Ichiha, Madara Ichiha. He then showed the red eyes that Izuku owned too. You also have those eyes, cool. Izuku spoke in fascination, showing his own red eyes Aka. The Sharingan. Why don't you two join me? I want to create a world without wars, suffering, but the guys in front of me don't want to do the same. Madara explained, another pair of Sharingan and strong people, wouldn't hurt. Naruto then shouted, we want peace, but why are we fighting again? He rubbed the back of his head cheapishly. Sakura just bashed his head, is so you won't have that fox ripped out of you, and then they will have all of the biju. Izuku and Rumi looked at each other then at Madara, we are in. I need to fight the biju anyways, so when you get them out can I fight against them? That is what the key for the Biju gate said. Ladara had his mouth wide open, it was simple getting two strong people to his side. I will be making them go into one, so it ten-tailed. After we do that you can fight me who will have the ten tails inside of. 
Sure thing, I cannot wait to dance. Izuku and Madara had the same smirks. Oh but first, come forth. The next thing made a lot of the shinobi piss their pants and Madara to be glad that they are with him. Shit tone of shadows was all against the shinobi alliance. 20 minutes later, okay now we have the 9 and 8 tails, it was simple. Looking behind everyone was defeated with ease, Madara just nodded. It was a fun day being Rumi and Izuku. Madara got his wish to fight someone strong, and now Izuku and Rumi are discovering the different universes. That's it guys. Thanks for watching and supporting us. See you in the next part.